So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some qualitative looks at what the stress magnitudes at depth might look like. And so these are just qualitative, but They, they, can, they can tell us some things about what the stress field might look like in the event that we don't know it fully. Right? If, we, if we don't know anything about the stress field, we can still infer a couple of things, right? We can, one thing we can do is we can draw a line assuming a hydrostatic pore pressure. Right? A hydrostatic pore pressure would be, you know, that's, that's what a column of water is, right? 0.44 psi per foot. Right? So <clears throat> that sets the lower bound of any of the other stresses. Right? Uh, and that's because, well, first of all, one thing is obvious, is that the vertical stress can't be less than the pore pressure. Because that would imply that the rock was floating. Right? If, the, if, the, if the pore pressure were greater than the vertical stress, that would imply that the rock was just floating, floating around. Right? That doesn't happen. <clears throat> so, in a normal faulting regime, all right. So we can we can draw a line for the hydrostatic uh, stress, and then we can also draw a line estimating the vertical stress by either integrating density logs if we have them, or just assuming like one PSI per foot. Right? And so if it's a normal faulting regime, remember normal faulting vertical stress is the maximum, right? then we know that the other two must be in between. Right? And the distance apart, right? and again, by definition, SH max is always greater, so it's always going to be further to the right than SH min. It makes sense. We have to come up with new definitions if that wasn't the case. Right? So SH max is always going to be further to the right than SH min, and how far they are apart is governed by the strength of the rock. And so we're going to talk about how rocks fail in a few weeks. We're going to look at you know what we call constitutive models, essentially uh, models of stress strain that once some critical values are exceeded, we will assume that the rock has failed. And so the distance, and, and one of those, the simplest model is called the mohr coulomb model. And the mohr coulomb model uh, essentially says that a rock will fail once, it's, once the distance between, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not strictly SH max and SH min. Uh, it's actually the maximum and minimum principal stresses. So it could include the vertical stress. So in, in this case, the maximum is the vertical. So this distance, this distance is set by the strength of the rock. Okay. And then, just by definition, we know that SH max must be in between those two guys somewhere. So this is just a qualitative picture of you know, what would happen in normal faulting. Again, Andersonian classification. SV is the maximum. The other two are in between. Um, in an overpressure scenario, and all overpressure means right now is greater than hydrostatic. So we'll talk about the mechanisms of overpressure and other things, but overpressure just, what I'm saying when I say overpressure is just greater than hydrostatic. So if I draw this line, I'm just saying that the real poor pressure field is to the right of that. That would be overpressure, greater than hydrostatic. If that happens, if we actually have an overpressure scenario, which we have a lot in the Gulf of Mexico, <coughs> then everything gets squeezed down. And the pore pressure, again, can never exceed the vertical stress. They can approach one another. Occasionally, as an approximation, we'll say that the ratio of them is one, that they are the same. Right? And that, that approximation is called lithos, uh, lithostatic. It, it, it can never actually exist, but we'll, as an approximation, we can say that. <coughs> uh, so yeah, as the pore pressure increases that uh, towards the vertical stress, then everything gets gets squeezed down. In between, yeah. 
just by definition. Ah, uh, they, well, they could be equal, actually. Yeah. I mean, it, it, not in real life, uh, but idealistically, they, they, could be, they could be equal. There would be nothing, there would be nothing that would violate any laws of mechanics uh, if, if the horizontal stresses were equal. And, and a lot of times in doing thought experiments or analysis, we, we will assume they're equal. Um, yeah, you can't really have... Yeah, they could be equal. They could be equal. I mean, again, in real life, that's probably not a, a real scenario anywhere in the world where they're perfectly equal right, to the to the ninth decimal place that you can measure. The, the reality is, you, you can't you can't often measure that accurately, particularly with the vertical stress magnitude. I mean, the horizontal stress magnitudes. You're lucky if you get within like a megapascal. So, so within a megapascal, you might say they're equal. <coughs> uh, okay, so strike slip faulting. It's just the same idea, right? We're going to draw draw a picture with the pore pressure. In strike slip, the vertical stress is between the two horizontal stresses, and uh, you know we have a pore pressure there, which sets the minimum. And as we go into an overpressure regime, then everything gets squeezed down. And while you know the SH max can be well, by definition is larger uh, in a, in a strike slip faulting regime. You know the pore pressure will never exceed the vertical stress, so everything gets squeezed down. Uh, same thing, reverse faulting, same picture. <coughs> 